Hi, this is Louisa at Louisa Harris Pilates. I'm going to just do a few more exercises in relaxation position just to help you connect to your centre and mobilise um, our shoulders and our hips and our spine. So we're going to just return to our relaxation position. Come onto your side and then just rolling onto your back. You may need a small head cushion or a folded towel underneath your head. So just make sure you're set up in neutral, that you've got the hips, hip bones level with each other, your belly button and your pubic bone, and the legs parallel. Okay. Then once you've organised, if you need to do your pelvic tilts or chin tucks, just to help you find that, shoulders can widen and the neck can lengthen. If you have a band, we're going to grab your band. Mine is quite long and light resistant, so I'm going to fold it in half. Um, so if you, your band is a bit heavier resistance, you won't need to do that. And if you don't have a band, you could interlock the fingers together, just loosely in a kind of big bear hug shape and get that sense of the magnetic connection between the hands. So you're not pulling on your fingers, but you just get that sense of this, that, that um, almost reciprocal energy, and that push and pull between the two. So we're going to hold the band in that shoulder drop position. Arms and palms are facing away, shoulders are wide and collarbones are open. You can either, either hold with a loose fist or keep your fingers lengthened. We're going to inhale. And as you breathe out and centre, just start to pull on that band a little bit. And as you do that, hopefully you just, without really thinking about it too much, you will feel the ribs glide down towards your tummy and the waist cinch in. And then inhale, you release that pull. So it isn't a massive range, so the muscles is nudging that band apart. So breath and centre, just pulling that band apart. And then inhale, that little bit of release. Okay, so breath and centre. I'm pulling apart with the entire arm, so keeping the wrists aligned, they're not flicking back into extension. And then inhale, return. We're just really using that to help you, just make a bit of a stronger connection to your centre as you exhale. And then once you've done that, we're going to just add that movement on to a knee drop. So as you breathe out and centre, just pulling on the band evenly on both sides, and you can open one leg out to the side, keeping the pelvis steady, and then inhale as you bring the leg back and release that pull on the band. So breath and centre, pull on the band, other leg, and then inhale to return. Okay, so you can just begin to alternate legs. Just try to keep the pelvis really steady and the leg that isn't opening really steady. So it's just our knee drop, which is beginning to mobilise our hips and work opposite side of our waist to help us stabilize and you can just widen your hold on the band a little bit and then we're going to just try and pull on the band with one arm as the opposite leg opens so that's going to help um, work our obliques a little bit more so I've just got a slightly wider hold so I'm going to keep my left arm still and as I breathe out center I'm just pulling with the right and then I'll knee drop with the left so the pelvis stays steady and then I'll inhale to come back to center Exhale, right arm stays still, left arm will pull, and then right leg will knee drop. And inhale, back to centre. So you've just got that diagonal work. We're going to do one more each side. You could always do a few more. And then coming back from there. So then I'll return to my the shoulder drop position with the band, but with the palms facing away. I'll just let the arms come down for a moment. So we're going to go into some ribcage closure and then a leg slide. So let's just bring the arms back to that shoulder drop position. So keep the width across the shoulders and the openness of collarbone, across the collarbones. And then breath and centre, that little pull on the band. And as you breathe out, connecting to your centre, just let the arms float back to wherever you can for your ribcage closure position. So careful you don't go too far, that the ribs flare or the back arches or the shoulders creep up towards your ears. Inhale when you get there, and then exhale we come back, either to shoulder drop or you could come down so the band might tap your thighs, but keep the arms long. So on the exhale, we're just heading back, just finding that connection and that range for you, and then you can inhale, return. And then we just add a single leg slide to that. So as you breathe out center, both arms back, one leg away, making sure that we're not letting the back arch. You could inhale, stay with the arms, flex the foot, and then exhale, gliding back. So breath and centre, arms and leg. Inhale, flex, and then exhale, return. Only if your back feels really good, you might want to slide both legs away without letting your back arch, flex the feet, leave the arms, and then inhale, gathering back. And that's probably a little easier if your feet are on a more slippery surface than the mat may well be. 
Okay, and then once you come back in from there, we just release. We're going to go straight into a brief hamstring stretch with the band. So into a knee fold, band around the legs, and just lengthen the leg away into your hamstring stretch. If you don't have the band, you could support your legs with your hands around the thigh. Maybe slide the other leg away if that's comfortable for your back and your hip. So keeping the waist long both sides. So a few breaths into there. And after at least three breaths, we're going to bring that leg in and just switch onto the other side. So lengthening that leg away, waist long both sides. A few breaths there, keeping the tailbone weighted down and the pelvis equally weighted on both sides. You don't have to slide the other leg away, you can keep it bent if that feels better for you. So once you're done, you can bend both legs in and we'll just pop the band to the side. So we're going to just do some normal spine curls and then spine curls with zigzags and then um, some curl ups and spine curls as well. So as we're going to be lifting up, you probably won't need your head cushion and some of you may well do the bridge instead of the spine curl as your alternative. So we're going to just try and create as much length through my spine as possible. Legs are parallel and just arms down by your side. So length through the neck, so we're not squashing up that throat. And then breath and centre, I'm going to go into a little pelvic tilt and begin to peel and wheel the spine at one vertebrae at a time. Breath at the top. And then as you breathe out, softening, peeling and releasing all the way back to neutral. Let's do one more in parallel. Inhale at the top and then softening back down. And then once you've landed, I'm going to just separate my legs and feet apart. So they're in slightly wider than hip width and slightly turned out. So just have the hands on the pelvis for a moment. So one part of the movement is that you're going to open the legs out to the side. So a bit like a double knee drop or oyster movement that you probably know from side lying. And the other part is that you'll come back through parallel and the legs roll in towards each other. So you've got an internal rotation of the hip. So that's a bit like a Charleston movement. So we've got that just both legs open and then both legs roll in. You're not twisting in the knee. It's all coming from the hip. So we'll add that to a spine curl. So as you breathe out and center, I'm going to then start with the legs open and spine curl up. At the top, make sure I'm just coming to neutral. And as I inhale, I'm gonna let the legs roll in towards each other. And then as I exhale, I'm gonna lower back down to the mat. And then once you've landed, you can inhale open, exhale rolling up, inhale legs go together towards each other, and then exhale return, and then you open at the bottom. We're gonna just try and do one more in this direction. And then when I land back down to the mat, I'm gonna keep that internal orientation of the legs, and now peel up on the exhale with the legs turned in. Then at the top, I'm gonna to open out, and then at the bottom, you can connect back together again. Okay, so try and get as much articulation as you can. It feels quite different for that parallel version, but it's quite good for helping to mobilize our hips. So opening and lowering. And then once I come back, I'm gonna just bring the legs to parallel and bring the hands behind the head. And we're going to do the combination of a spine curl and curl up to begin to mobilize our upper back as well. So taking another wide breath in, and as you breathe out centre, I'm going to peel that spine up, so still as much articulation as possible, breath at the top, and as you breathe out and start to lower down, I'm going to come into that chin tuck and begin to curl up. So by the time my pelvis is in neutral, I'm at that end range of my curl up, head heavy in my hands, elbows and shoulders soft, breath then as I lower from my curl up, I'm going to come up to my spine curl. So just seesawing up as one end comes up, the other end goes down. And just taking your time to try and work through each segment of your spine. That's it. And then the next time you come into that curl up phase, we're going to pause there and I'm going to just bring one leg into knee fold and reach the opposite arm away. Inhale, they can lower, keep that curl. Exhale, other side. Inhale, they can lower and releasing back down. Okay, so breath and center, chin tuck, gliding, reach one arm, opposite leg, they can lower, other side as you exhale, inhale lower and exhale to return. I'm going to just do one more to each side. And 
and then you can land back down from there and then once you've landed if you need a head cushion back please grab it and we'll just do some hip rolls so we're going to bring the legs and the feet together and if you've got weights or just tin cans you could use your weights here so i've got the legs and feet together arms in that hug slightly rounded shape and as you breathe out and center it's going to let the pelvis and legs go one way neck and head can go the other and then inhale they'll both come back together I'm opening out the arm and I'm looking towards the arm that's opening and you're keeping the shoulder blades connected to the mat, not letting the spine flare or arch or extend. It's just a rotation. If you wanted a little bit more challenge, you could extend the leg. So I've got my left arm going out to the side, my legs going to the right, and I'm going to just extend that left leg, but keeping the thighs glued together. And I've got to work that bit harder to bring it back with control. So if my legs go over to the left and my arm to the right, I'd extend that right leg, being careful it doesn't pull on my back to come back in from there. So you don't have to add that leg extension. It's just another little variation that you can work on with control. And let's then let the arms come down by your side, palms up, Either legs can remain together or you could separate them apart in that slightly wider than hip width and turned out position. I just do a few hip rolls with the legs and feet back on the ground as well as adding that internal and external rotation of the hips. And then once you finish just make sure your weights are out of the way if you use them and you can roll onto your side and come up to seated. Thank you very much.